Okay, so for this next section, what we're going to do is we are going to get our character, uh, the upper section of it, working. And by that I mean the animations changing uh, and it being locked to the position of the legs. Um, so if we go into our, our boxer, oh, the reason we've, we've bought it in, by the way, is we're just going to be using this for display purposes. Just so whilst we're playing we'll be able to see uh, what's happening. Uh, in the final game what we're going to do is we're going to spawn this in uh, once the game starts rather than having it just in the level. Um, so what we're going to do is with this in existence here we're going to go to the dashboard, we're going to open up our boxer and we're going to have a look at the different animations that we have available. So the first one is blocking and this is for if you push like down it's going to stop anything from it hitting the player um, but still reduce a little bit of health. Uh, you've got the idle, which is the default animation. You can see that with the little star next to it, that's the indicator. Uh, you've got hit, which is obviously the response to being punched. Uh, and then we've of course got punch, which is going to be the animation that plays when we launch the projectile. Um, but if we go into collision, you'll be able to see that we essentially have a sensor for the collision rather than a solid object. The reason we want that is because our legs are solid. The, the, you know, the, the, the toe, the toes of the characters are essentially solid. Um, and if we have this uh, character locked to the position of the the legs coordinates, we don't want those two collision boxes uh, overlapping and potentially kind of causing issues with collision. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to leave these as a sensor so they can detect if something's happening but not actually have any physical volume to them. Um, we, we need the legs to have physical volume to them because they need to collide with the ground. Um, but the upper section, we've disabled gravity for it so they, they'll just float or be connected to the character, which we'll do in a little bit. So inside of our character, we're going to go to events. And we're going to create ourselves a basic chunk of code, and that's going to be um, making it that based on which key that you push, whether it's up or down, you're going to get a different animation playing. Um, now, what's going to be interesting with this is that we're going to use two different types of input uh, to trigger animations. So, for that, the first one is going to be when the input is held down. Uh, the reason we're going to do that is this will be for when our character is, is defending itself. Um, now what we're going to do for this is we're going to... You might have noticed that the animation we have for... Uh, what was it called again? Block. Is a non-looping animation. Um, we're going to use this to our advantage by saying that when this uh, the, the animation is down. We're going to switch the frame to zero. And that way, what it'll do is it'll switch back to the start of the animation. And as long as the key is held down, it will re retain that animation. Um, so, for example, you know, we, we won't have to keep pushing to keep the arms raised. Uh, it'll just do it as long as we're holding down that key. Uh, so, the second one input we're going to create will be if up is pressed rather than when down. And that way this will be pretty much a, a similar structure of code, um, except this will be for punch. Oh, and remember with it being pressed it will literally just do like a a flicker, you know, it'll, it'll switch to the animation and it'll flicker to the first frame and then uh, return back to the its default position, as you can see here. So now if we test this with our actor in the scene, we should be able to see the animation switch. This is the full code that we're going to be creating from this. Uh, 
There's a lot of more complex stuff further down the lines, but for now we're just going to start with this simple structure. So, so a character can move left and right. So you can see that it's blocking he's punching. And no matter how much I hold it down, the key, it's just playing animation once for punching. If I uh, hold down block, it continues to block. So, from here, the, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to look into game attributes, and we're going we're gonna to essentially lock the position of the character's legs to... Sorry, we're going to take the position of the character's legs, uh, and we're going to tell our, the upper body to stay at those coordinates. Um, we will do something a bit more complex with that later, but just for now we need the character to stay on that location. So for that what we need to do is we need to go to our character and the character's legs and we're going to create ourselves a game attribute. Now I've already created all the game attributes in here. Uh, you can see that they're all number based attributes. Uh, the one that we're wanting to create, or which have been created, is the X and Y position of player one. Now, what this is doing, or what we're going to do with it, is we're going to we're going to keep track of the X and Y of our legs, and then what we can do with that is send that information across to the box's upper upper torso, and it'll receive that information and we can use that as a coordinate for where it needs to be it, it needs to stay so if i go to events i've got another always function in here so if i go to attributes game attributes you'll see that they all of the game attributes are stored in here if you want to find out more about game attributes uh, there'll be a tutorial <laughs> involving fireworks being released in the uh, like very soon um, to keep an eye out about that uh, so what we're going to do here is we need, rather than setting the variable or the attribute in here, what we're going to do is retrieve the attribute and set the character's whoops, x and y position. Now the only thing we're going to have to consider, which will look pretty weird, is if we set it to the x and y coordinates. Um, if if we if we just set it to uh, let's bear one bear with me a sec. If we just set it to these two numbers, what's going to happen is it's going to be created at the exact same location as the legs. So what you'll have is the character essentially squashed into its own, you know, feet. Uh, it'll be half the height that it should be. Um, so what we need to do is we need to factor in where we want the the torso to be. So it'll, it, if we don't adjust this, it'll look like this, <laughs> which would be kind of stupid. Um, so we need to essentially deduct 32 from whatever value that the character's Y position currently is. Um, so what we could do is we're going to set player, sorry, uh, set Y of the upper torso of the boxer to the value that we've got from the boxer's toes minus 32 and what that will give us is the boxer the boxer uh, the boxer's torso just above the position of the legs uh, and yeah hopefully with any luck fingers crossed um, the, the animations that work with it uh, and if that works that'll be it for this video here and then next we're going to be dealing with uh, the projectile and launching uh, the projectile from the character's body. So there you go, there's the block, there's the punch. Cool. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up this video. Uh, yeah, as I said, next we'll be, we'll be dealing with getting a, a basic kind of punch projectile flying out the front of this character's fist. So uh, tune in next time.